Jeff Bezos was born in Albuquerque, New Mexico in 1964. Bezos is the founder of Amazon, the largest retailer in the world. He graduated from Princeton University in 1986 with a Bachelor of Science in Engineering in Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. As of 2014 his net worth was $32.3 billion. We see our customers as invited guests to a party, and we are the hosts. It's our job every day to make every important aspect of the customer experience a little bit beer. What we need to do is always lean into the future, when the world changes around you and when it changes against you, what used to be a tailwind is now a headwind, you have to lean into that and figure out what to do because complaining isn't a strategy. The best customer service is if the customer doesn't need to call you, doesn't need to talk to you. It just works. The common question that gets asked in business is, why? That's a good question, but an equally valid question is, why not? A brand for a company is like a reputation for a person. You earn reputation by trying to do hard things well. There are two kinds of companies, those that work to try to charge more and those that work to charge less. We will be the second. I believe you have to be willing to be misunderstood if you're going to innovate. Life's too short to hang out with people who aren't resourceful. I don't want to use my creative energy on somebody else's user interface. I strongly believe that missionaries make better products. They care more. For a missionary, it's not just about the business. There has to be a business, and the business has to make sense, but that's not why you do it. You do it because you have something meaningful that motivates you. It's not an experiment if you know it's going to work. We've had three big ideas at Amazon that we've stuck with for 18 years, and they're the reason we're successful, put the customer first. Invent. And be patient. The one thing that offends me the most is when I walk by a bank and see ads trying to convince people to take out second mortgages on their home so they can go on vacation. That's approaching evil. There are two ways to extend a business. Take inventory of what you're good at and extend out from your skills. Or determine what your customers need and work backward, even if it requires learning new skills. Kindle is an example of working backward. If you're complete focused, you have to wait until there is a complete doing something. Being customer focused allows you to be more pioneering. 
real estate is the key cost of physical retailers. That's why there's the old saw, location, location, location. I think frugality drives innovations, just like other constraints do. One of the only ways to get out of a box is to invent your way out. Amazon.com strives to be the e-commerce destinies where consumers can find and discover anything they want to buy online. Because, you know, resilience, if you think of it in terms of the gold rush, then you'd be prey depressed right now because the last nugget of gold would be gone. But the good thing is, with innovations, there isn't a last nugget. Every new thing creates two new questions and two new opportunities. If your customer base is aging with you, then eventually you are going to become obsolete or irrelevant. You need to be constantly figuring out who are your new customers and what are you doing to stay forever young? What consumerism really is, at its worst is getting people to buy things that don't actually improve their lives. Millions of people were inspired by the Apollo program. I was five years old when I watched Apollo 11 unfold on television, and without any doubt it was a big contributor to my passions for science, engineering, and exploration. I think that, ah, I'm a very goofy sort of person in many ways. If you do build a great experience, customers tell each other about that. Word of mouth is very powerful. There'll always be serendipity involved in discovery. My view is there's no bad me to innovate. I don't think that you can invent on behalf of customers unless you're willing to think long term, because a lot of invention doesn't work. If you're going to invent, it means you're going to experiment, and if you're going to experiment, you're going to fail, and if you're going to fail, you have to think long term. The thing that motivates me is a very common form of motivation. And that is, with other folks counting on me, it's so easy to be motivated. If you don't understand the details of your business you are going to fail. It is very difficult to get people to focus on the most important things when you're in Boom Mesa. Market leadership can translate directly to higher revenue, higher profitability, greater capital velocity, and correspondingly stronger returns on invested capital. What's dangerous is not to evolve. E-books had to happen. You're not going to make Hemingway beer by adding animations. Strip malls are history. Cultures, for beer or worse, are very stable. I went to Princeton specifically to study physics. I'm a big fan of all you can eat plans, because they're simpler for customers. 
If you only do things where you know the answer in advance, your company goes away. Mediocre theoretical physicists make no progress. They spend all their me understanding other people's progress. My own view is that every company requires a long-term view. One of the things it was obvious you could do with an online store is have a much more complete selection. The human brain is an incredible parent matching machine. The key thing about a book is that you lose yourself in the author's world. You don't want to negotiate the price of simple things you buy every day. You know, we love stories and we love narrative, we love to get lost in an author's world. You want your customers to value your service. We expect all our businesses to have a positive impact on our top and boom lines. Profitability is very important to us or we wouldn't be in this business. The killer app that got the world ready for appliances was the light bulb. So the light bulb is what wired the world. and they weren't thinking about appliances when they wired the world. They were really thinking about dash they weren't paying electricity into the home. They were pong lighting into the home. I'm skeptical of any mission that has advisors at its send a piece. I think the definition of a book is changing. Percentage margins don't matter. What matters always is dollar margins, the actual dollar amount. Companies are valued not on their percentage margins, but on how many dollars they actually make, and a multiple of that. The book is not really the container for the book. The book itself is the narrative. It's the thing that people create. For people who are readers, reading is important to them. I'm skeptical that the novel will be reinvented. I've always been at the intersion of computers and whatever they can revolutionize. A company shouldn't get addicted to being shiny, because shiny doesn't last. For many people, extended reading sessions on an LCD display cause eye strain. I don't know about you, but most of my exchanges with cashiers are not that meaningful. I like having the digital camera on my smartphone, but I also like having a dedicated camera for when I want to take real pictures. I think there are going to be a bunch of tablet-like devices. It's really a different product category. I very much believe the internet is indeed all it is cracked up to be. I'm a genetic optimist. Infrastructure web services had to happen. 
part of company culture is path dependent, it's the lessons you learn along the way. What we want to be is something completely new. There is no physical analogy for what Amazon.com is becoming. On the internet, companies are scale businesses, characterized by high fixed costs and relatively low variable costs. You can be two sizes, you can be big, or you can be small. It's very hard to be medium. A lot of medium-sized companies had the financing rug pulled out from under them before they could get big. But there's so much kludge, so much terrible stuff, we are at the 1908 Hurley washing machine stage with the internet. That's where we are. We don't get our hair caught in it, but that's the level of positiveness of where we are. We're in 1908. People forget already how much utility they get out of the internet, how much utility they get out of email, how much utility they get out of even simple things like brochureware online.